Thank you for joining us at Hope Lutheran Church for Worship Online again this week. And Pastor Carl, I got just one word to say. What's that? Ah! <laughs> We're back in the purple I tier. I agree, I agree. Yes. What's happened? I, we have moved back in the purple tier, so we were going to be worshiping in person this Sunday, but we cannot do so. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? What? God's still in control. God's still in charge. And the church isn't a building. The church is you, the, the, the people. people. That's right. The people. And I see you've got your red on. Yes, because... It's Reformation Sunday. That's right. So happy Reformation to all of you. And Martin Luther, over 500 years ago, joined with Pastor Carl in nailing the 95 theses on that wall of Wittenberg Cathedral. That's you were there, right? Absolutely correct. But <laughs> I look out there and I see all these sad faces today. No beer and brats. What's going on? <laughs> That's right. Not this year. No we, polka mass. I know it. It makes it tough. It makes it tough. But we at least have something to look forward to to next year, right? That's right. We're, Bigger and better. And we can be also thankful that we're not in Minnesota, yeah. where they've got <laughs> 10 inches of snow. Yes, yes, oh. yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, 90 degrees here, so if you're thinking of coming out, come on. That's right. Come and join us. We're here for you. All right. Shall we start? Let's worship together. Yes. On this Reformation Sunday, we welcome you to Hope Lutheran Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of, of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways through the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us together sing our opening hymn. Jesus. Oh 
faint Heal the sick and lead the blind Just and Our reading for today comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the third chapter. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed, and it is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove that the present time that himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes a boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord. Amen. Well, I know that many of you are watching this from different parts of the country and even different parts of the world. 
And I have to say that I'm so glad that you are here. Thank you. But this week in the Coachella Valley, we received some disappointing news. We have been moved from our red tier into the purple tier, which means that we cannot worship in person this week as we had planned. Now, this was more disappointing to me than the Vikings season so far. But I am constantly reminded that the church is not a building. The church is you. And as hard as it is, this is also a reminder of what Martin Luther attempted to bring to light over 500 years ago. You see, in the story of Martin Luther, it started with a storm. As a young man, Luther was studying to become a lawyer, a profession that he and his family had dreamed for him. Now, one day while Martin was traveling, he encountered some trouble. Lightning, thunder, rain, and wind. He thought his life was over. So he called out to Saint Anne, the mother of the Virgin Mary. Save me, he cried, and I will become a monk. Well, he survived, and so a monk he became. Now, you can call it fate or chance, but Luther described it as God pursuing him, leading him to a life in the church. That was just the beginning. Luther immersed himself in both the monastic and the scholastic worlds as he taught at the University of Wittenberg. He soaked in the Bible, teaching from the Old and New Testament. Yet, it was a troubling time for Luther. The church he was a part of taught that salvation was something to be earned. That God was righteous, and as sinners, God's role was to punish us. He spent six hours a day in confession, fasted for days on end, and would inflict himself with other physical pains as penitence. Luther felt unlovable by a God that demanded perfection. Yet one day, Martin was asked to teach a course on Romans, and the words jumped off the page and into his heart. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. That day, Luther was set free. Free from the thought that there was anything he could do to earn salvation. Free from the demands of a church that claimed they held the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Free to believe that God's role was not to punish us for our sins, but to give us grace and mercy. And that all we have to do is to receive that grace and rejoice. And Luther began to tell the world about this God, a God who loves us so dearly that we are relentlessly pursued just as Luther was during that storm. A God who would send God's only Son, not for the perfect people, but for the sinners. A God and a Savior that will never abandon us, that will stand by our side no matter how often we fail or how short we fall. And so when the church not only said that salvation must be earned, but could actually be bought in the form of indulgences, he had had enough. And so on October 31st, 1517, he nailed his 95 theses to the door of Wittenberg Cathedral. And in doing so, he freed us to be people of the cross. Being people of the cross is understanding that God speaks to people in the depths of our souls. In grief, in death, in betrayal, God is there. God was there on Calvary, even as Jesus died. It was through the darkness on Friday that the sun rose again on Resurrection Easter Sunday. Being people of the cross says that we hope because of the darkness. We hope because of suffering and death. 
knowing that as Paul wrote in Romans, and not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. The morning after COVID, the morning after 9-11, the morning after your loved one has died, it is the theology of the cross that speaks, that preaches to a suffering world desperately in need of a moment of hope and truth in the face of so much darkness and despair. If God was there at the cross and Jesus rose again, then God could still be here, even after death, even after suffering, after divorce and betrayal, God could still be here. And the theology of the cross not only heals, but it indicts to those who claim to understand the workings of God, who suggest that human suffering is produced by the hands of an angry God, to those who claim that once you give your life to Christ, suffering vanishes and wealth follows. The theology of the cross indicts. God's greatest power often comes immediately following the greatest darkness and suffering we've experienced. To those who would make Christianity an either-or proposition, who would try to determine who is in and who is out of heaven, the theology of the cross does what it always does, reminding human beings of the absolute sovereignty of God, that we are together in awe of a God who saves us, not because of what we do or who we are, but because of who God is. And that is worth worshiping. The Reformation reminds us that we have the responsibility and the freedom to choose life over death, to know that God created each one of us to be loved beyond measure, that each human life is equally powerful and designed by God, and to know that the greatest exercise of Christian freedom is to serve one another. The Reformation calls us to ask, where am I called to serve my neighbor? Where am I called to serve God? Am I loving myself the way God loves me? Am I treating something or someone other than God as my Lord? The Reformation reminds us that while we might not be able to worship together in person, God is still at work in you, in our community, and in our world. It is a reminder of hope, one that we can all cling to no matter what may come. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks in this season of reformation that you are here with us, guiding us, leading us, and promising to be with us always. And for that, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Well, thank you once again for joining us for worship online this week. And thank you to those of you who have contributed financially to Hope Lutheran Church. It has made a huge difference, not just in our church, but in our entire community. We are helping several different organizations reach out with the good news of Jesus and supporting people who are really struggling. So if you'd like to partner with us, there are three ways you can do so. You can send in a contribution to Hope Lutheran Church at 45900 Portola Avenue in Palm Desert, California, 92260. You can also text to give simply by taking out your smartphone and texting 84321. And finally, you can go to hopepd.org. You'll find not only ways to contribute, but you'll find all of our ministries and opportunities throughout the week. Like we've got some great things coming up. We are still gonna be doing our trunk or treat on Halloween. So if you'd like to help out with that, go to hopepd.org, you'll find all the information that you need. It's gonna be a great way to connect with kids and families in our valley. And also, I'd like to invite you to like and share this video. By liking and sharing, it doesn't seem like much if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, but it makes a huge, huge 
difference in getting the word out. I'm hearing from people in uh, Cairo, the Philippines. I've had people from Rome reach out. So you are making a difference simply by liking and subscribing. And finally, we have a new church app. If you go to your app store, you can search for Church Center. And once you download that app, simply uh, search for the Church Hope and in the city put Palm Desert and you'll find us right there. That's going to be instrumental in helping us reconnect. You'll find connections to our website, to Hope Kids. You'll find all sorts of great things on that app. So I'd like to encourage you to do that today. So now let us sing our hymn together. On this Reformation Sunday, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, where he comes to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church and the world around us. Let us pray. In your love, you speak to your church. Give courage and the bond of love to all who gather in your name, that this love turn toward our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
In your love, you create our earth filled with living things of every kind. Sustain the intricate connections among plants, insects, animals, and organisms we don't even know or recognize. Bless the work of scientists who, who help us extend neighbor love to the natural world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your love, you guide with justice, inspire leaders for truthful conversations and wise policies, that decisions are made for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your love, you tenderly care for your children and nurse them to health. Bring relief to all those who need healing, hope, or restoration this day. Bruce Fossey, Kent Schultz, Carol Beers, and those that we bring before you in our hearts. Lord, you know their needs as well as our own. Let each of us feel your power, strength, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your love, you accompany us in life's transitions. We pray for new parents, those grieving a loss, those who are retiring, and those embarking on new ventures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your love, we remember those who were dear to us and now rest in you. We give thanks for Martin Luther and all who seek to reform and renew your church. Give us courage to live out your gospel revealing your love until our days on earth have ended. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call to you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms. Fold them around all of us for all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let us prepare our hearts to receive the Lord's Supper. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy and precious blood given and shed for you. May God guide and bless your every footstep unto life's everlasting. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant to you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I want to close this, this today with a greeting from Hawaii, aloha. Cheryl and I are on a little vacation for a couple of weeks, and so we'll see you when we get back. Uh, so God bless, have a wonderful week.